Good morning. My name is Pastor Doug, and I am so happy to welcome you to Wesley's Christmas Festival of Music. We have been planning this special service for weeks, and I know that you're going to be in for a real treat today. Today we are celebrating the birth of Jesus through the ministry of music as our Wesley family share their many talents and lead us in a joyous time of celebration through word and song. Come, let us worship the newborn king. Luke tells us that after Jesus' birth, the first persons to learn the news were the shepherds. Here is his account of this glorious announcement. In that region were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, who is the, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. Charles Wesley wrote one of his most widely known and loved texts based on these verses. The invitation to join with the angelic chorus is deepened in stanza two with the reference to the prophetic fulfillment, offspring of a virgin's womb. The celebration of Jesus' birth as Prince of Peace and source of light and light is enhanced by a tune written by Felix Mendelssohn. Please join us as we sing, Hark, the Herald Angels Sing. Our first song on our Wesley Music Festival is Would I Miss the Miracle? Our former choir director, Renee Miller, and her son Bob have been singing and serving at Wesley since the early 1970s. This song asks us, would we see the miracle if it happened here today? Would we recognize the king if he was at our doorstep? Or would we be too busy to answer the door? Oh, 
The Epiphany Carol is based on the account of the visit of the wise men to Jesus, as told in Matthew 2. It is traditional to speak of them as kings, although the Bible does not call them so, and also to assume that there were three, one bearing each of the three gifts. In the text, each king presents a gift and mentions the symbolism of the gift. Gold represents a crown for the newborn king. Frankincense is for a god worthy to be worshipped by all. Myrrh is the spice used to anoint the dead, prophesying the death and suffering of Jesus. Our soloist is Rochelle Miller. Hi, it's Rochelle, and this week I will be singing We Three Kings of Orient R, and I hope you enjoy. We three kings of Orient R, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fort and moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with loyal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Born a king on Bethlehem's plain, gold I bring to crown him again. King forever ceasing, never over us all to reign. Oh, star of wonder, star of night, star. a midnight clear, 
This beautiful carol shares the song of the angels. Peace on the earth, goodwill to men. Taken from Luke 2, verse 14. The lyrics offer hope that the song of the blessed angels who bend on hovering wings would soothe the babble sounds of a suffering world. The tune, Carol, was written by Richard Storrs Willis and joined the lyrics written by Edmund Sears for the Methodist hymnal in 1878. This arrangement, written by Karen Smith and David Snyder, includes the melodies of Franz Gruber's Silent Night. Our flautist is Christine Miller.
Our next beloved carol was written for Christmas Eve in 1818 by assistant pastor Joseph Moore and organist Franz Gruber at St. Nicholas Church in Obendorf, Austria. Tradition tells us the organ failed to play that evening. It probably was first sung by children accompanied by guitar. The text provides the setting of the birth of Jesus, tells of the shepherds who are visited by heavenly host, and speaks of the coming of Jesus as the dawn of redeeming grace. Today, Dee and I are proud to have our granddaughter, Rose Runyon, offer her own arrangement of Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child. Our Wesley family is blessed with the Allender ladies. Sisters Anne and Julia and Mother Marcia have been making beautiful music 
all their lives. Today, they have put together a medley of carols for our enjoyment. Listen now as Anne, Julie, and Marcia share some Allender magic. Once in royal David city stood a lowly cattle shed where a mother laid her baby in a manger for his bed. Oh! 
Bells on Christmas Day was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. It was a poem written on Christmas Day in 1863. References to the Civil War are prevalent in some of the verses that are not commonly sung, but the refrain, peace on earth, goodwill to men, is a reference to the King James Version of Luke 2, 14. It was not until 1872 that the poem is known to have been set to music. Bing Crosby recorded the song in 1956, and it became a hit single. In 2008, a contemporary Christian music group, Casting Crowns, scored their eighth number one Christian hit with this interpretation of verses 1, 6, 7, and 3, interposed with a new chorus. Our soloist is Sidney LaCroce.
O Little Town of Bethlehem was written by Lewis Henry Redner. He was born on December 15, 1831, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He was an American musician, best known as the composer of the popular Christmas carol, St. Louis, better known as A Little Town of Bethlehem. Redner played the organ at four different churches during his life. He spent 19 years as organist at the Church of the Holy Trinity, Philadelphia. While there, he set Pastor Philip Brooks's poem of his recollection of a pilgrimage to Bethlehem to music on Christmas Eve, 1868, and the carol was first sung the next day. The Heartstrings Dulcimer Trio who opened our service today within the bleak midwinter, will now provide their arrangement of O Little Town of Bethlehem. The musicians are Roxanne Palmer, Cindy Barbie, and Kate Humphrey. <laughs> Written in a calypso tune, this song tells the story of the birth of Jesus, from the birth in a stable in Bethlehem to the trumpet sounds of the angels proclaiming to the shepherds. Steve Bittner shares his song, written by Chester Hairston in 1956 and arranged by Schumann Music Company in 1966. <laughs> Joseph and his wife Mary came to Bethlehem. 
Away in a Manger is a Christmas carol first published in the late 19th century and used widely through the English-speaking world. Although it was long claimed to be the work of German religion, re religious reformer Martin Luther, the carol is now thought to be wholly American in origin. The two most common musical settings are by William K. Kirkpatrick in 1895 and James Ramsey Murray in 1887. Debbie and Bob Moore will share both of these tunes. God Rest You Merry Gentlemen is an English traditional Christmas carol dating all the way back to the 16th century. The carol is referred to in Charles Dickinson's 1843, A Christmas Carol. Like a lot of well-known Christmas carols, the lyrics center around the joy experienced at the news of Christ's birth, all sung in a beautiful minor melody. Again, Dee and I are very proud as our grandson, Noah Runyon, will bring us wonderful tidings of comfort and joy. God rest ye merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. For Jesus Christ our Savior was born to us this day. To save us all from Satan's power when we were gone astray. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. From God our Heavenly Father, a blessed angel came. And unto certain shepherds brought tidings of the same. Bethlehem was born the Son of God by name. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. The shepherds at those tidings rejoiced with much 
much in mind and left their flocks of feeding. A tempest storm and wind and went to Bethlehem straightway. This blessed babe divine. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. But when in Bethlehem they came where at this infant lay, they found him in a manger where oxen feed on hay. His mother Mary kneeling there, the Lord to she prayed. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. Now to the Lord sing praises, all you within this place. And with true love and brotherhood, each other now embrace. This holy tide of Christmas, all love and doth deface. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. Oh, tidings of comfort and joy. When I think about Christmas, it amazes me that Jesus came to earth the way that he did. He could have come in power as a king and a ruler with great authority, and he could have established his kingdom and everybody would know who he was. But he didn't come that way. I believe that he came the way he did because he wanted to say that he is for everybody. He was born and made himself nothing. He came as a baby and was born in a stable, not a castle, but a barn in place where animals live. John the Baptist proclaimed, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. And in Revelation, the angels and the elders and the saints are singing, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. This Christmas, let's all worship and adore our Savior and lift high his holy name. Sleeping in a manger under dreamless skies. See the newborn king trading every glory for a silent night. Here is the promise we have waited for. He will not leave us in the dark.
O Holy Night, which is also known as Cantique de Noël, is a well-known Christmas carol composed by Adolphe Adam in 1847 to the French poem Midnight Christians, written by poet Placide Capot, 1808 to 1877. The carol reflects on the birth of Jesus as humanity's redemption. The song was premiered by opera singer Emily Laurie. Unitarian minister John Sullivan Dwight wrote the English version in 1855. This version became popular in the United States, especially in the North, where the third verse resonated with abolitionists, including Dwight himself. Lisa Skirpham will sing the first and third verses of Dwight's version. lovely duet, we hear a reprise of the carol, What Child Is This? Written in 1865, William Dix was 29 years old when he suffered from a near-fatal bout of sickness that forever changed his life and inspired him to write hymns. The meaningful lyrics and the soulful melody of this carol 
evoke a palpable scenario. It gives the feeling that God himself has transformed into the form of man through this baby and that the Almighty has arrived to rescue humanity. It's a certain and clear sign which humans went on to declare with courage and ingenuity. The tribute is fitting. As humans marvel in wonder and amazement of the true sense of inevitability, what child is this? The sister and brother team, Abigail and Eli Whitehead Zimmers, will now share with us on the piano and cello. Okay. Hi, I'm Eli. And I'm Abigail. Uh, and today we're going to be playing for you What Child Is This? Merry Christmas. One, two, ready, go. What child is this who plays forevermore. Chris Tomlin and Matt Marr worked together to create a new modern style song that was inspired by Handel's Messiah. In Matthew 1 verse 23 it says, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. We began our service within the bleak midwinter a song which refers to the darkness of winter and yet the light that the birth of the Savior gives forth. This song reminds us that in the midst of our turmoil, when it feels like the whole world is suffering and groaning, Christ was born to reign in our lives forevermore. We need to do our part to celebrate and to share his love to all. Our praise band or Adonai, will sing the song, Please Join Us.
I want to thank all of our musicians for the gift of music that they have shared with us today. Our streaming team for the countless hours recording, re-recording, re-recording again, and editing and putting it all together. And for Deb's thoughtful introductions to today's song. Let's close our time together with a word of prayer. God, we thank you for the gift of music, for the rich inspiration of past ages, and for the loveliness that gives life meaning. Send us forth humming the great melodies that proclaim the birth of our Lord and Savior. Send us forth inspired, that in all we do we might show Christ, the light to all the world. Amen. Have a great day.